Nintendo really did their best to get rid of all glitches in Super Mario Maker 2. They removed a couple of fun mechanics that often were the starting point for glitches, like shell trains or stacking springs on top of other items. They removed lots of small tricks that opened up possibilities to break the game, like changing how node blocks behave. Basically, they did everything they could to release Super Mario Maker 2 completely glitchless. Naturally, that didn't work out that great. So today we're going to take a look at the first round of glitches that already got discovered in Super Mario Maker 2. So you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so Mario is a bit worried about the passing of time. You know, he really isn't the youngest anymore and his job really requires him to be physically fit. So he looked into different ways to slow down the speed of time. Since all our time-preserving, lag-generating contraptions are sadly broken in Mario Maker 2, Mario has to look into other tricks to alter the passing of time. Luckily, our plumber is following Graham Cracker on Twitter, because there he learned about a possible setup that might allow him to do the impossible. So basically, if Mario eats a delicious fire flower, at the same moment he enters a door and then immediately takes damage by touching a spiked spiny upon leaving the door again, then the space-time continuum should break. So let's give it a try. So our plumber eats the fire flower, enters the door, touches the ouching spiny and hooray! He actually did it. Mario found a way to stop the passing of time. Everything is frozen. That's awesome. Though, um, Mario is frozen as well. He, he can't move anymore. Oh, and this conveyor belt is about to drop him into lava. Luckily for Mario, lava doesn't work without time. But sadly for Mario, this also means that he now falls for... Um, forever. Hmm, maybe messing with the space-time is a bad idea after all. Um... Maybe let's take a look at what Luigi is up to. So here we have Luigi in front of four chain jump cannons. So what does a chain jump cannon do? Well, a chain jump cannon is a cannon that cannoneers chain jumps. So this glitch is really interesting. As soon as the game starts, the chain jumps chase to the left, back to the right, hit the note block, and then they obviously become a bit confused. They forget how to be a good dog, and they start to believe they are birds. They start to float indefinitely. He will use this to create the world's first flying dog airship. Luigi has to carefully spin jump on top of the flying chain jump vehicle while dodging dangerous Threats. That glitch is one of the weirdest currently in the game. All that we have to do to make this work is just to build this surprisingly simple setup and then the dogs always shoot out flying. Hooray! Next, let's take a quick look at a couple of smaller glitches. So here is a fun little Yoshi glitch. Basically, we have a Yoshi egg on top of note blocks, a one-way door and lava that rises fast. So as soon as we start the game, the Yoshi hatches, the lava rises, it touches our dinosaur and then... Whee! Now Yoshi believes that he's a bird. So for anyone who is worried that we just shot Yoshi into space, don't worry, he comes back down after a while. Man, we're really not especially nice to Yoshi, are we? I hope he doesn't snap and become a villain or anything. Nah, it's just so much fun to watch Yoshi getting rocketed into the sky. I'm sure he understands. So from our ongoing series, what is the most complicated way to trigger a P-switch I proudly present? The thwomp that believes he's a bird solution. So I saw a random clip of this happening somewhere on Twitter a couple of days ago and actually thought that it's a small neat feature that they added at first. But as it turns out, that is probably unintended for a very simple reason. It only works if there is an enemy in front of the thwomp that triggers the node block before the thwomp reaches it. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay, so we already made a lot of stuff fly today, but there is one more. So if we put down Boom Boom in 3D World, then he starts to madly swing around trying to punch us. But if we stack two Boom Booms on top of each other in a small area, then both do the rotation attack thingy at the same time. This causes a massive downdraft of air, which blows both Boom Booms upwards and allows them to fly. Hooray! Fun fact of the day, that's actually the same principle that allows helicopters to fly. So how's Mario doing? Hmm, he's still falling. Ouch. They probably have to do something to get him out of this little mishap. Luckily there is a glitch that might allow Mario to escape this very not fun situation. A teleportation glitch. So here Toadette finds herself in the middle of a room. There is absolutely nothing going on here. There's just a single lonely on off block, a bumper and a delicious one up mushroom behind it. Toadette would love to devour this teasing one up mushroom. But how is she supposed to get to it? Well the answer is surprisingly simple. All that she has to do is to hit her mushroom shaped head against the on off block to wait for a second and... Hurry. 
hooray. She got teleported directly in front of the yum yum mushroom. Okay, so how did this work? Well, the setup for this glitch is actually surprisingly simple. Like, seriously, I have no idea how Nintendo was able to miss this. Though, I ain't complaining. All we have to do is to put down a railway switch like this, an on-off block and a curved track piece. That's it. If we now put any item onto the track piece, then it teleports to the bottom left corner as soon as it touches the curved track piece. But not only the item on tracks teleports, but everything on top of it as well. And if Toadette happens to stand in between the object and the place where it teleports to, then Toadette gets teleported as well. This glitch is incredibly powerful and easy to set up. Make sure to give this a try before it gets patched. So before we take a look at my absolute favorite glitch found so far, let's first talk about a really weird mechanic that apparently is in the game. Shell Direction Manipulation. So check this out. Here we have a quick setup that makes a spring drop onto a shell once we activate an on-off block. So we can activate this on-off block hundreds of times. The shell will always travel to the right after touching the spring. But if we drop down this blue platform before we activate the on-off block, then the shell suddenly travels to the left. The reason for this is incredibly weird. Shells always travel to the right if there is a loaded P-switch or power block above them. And they always travel to the left if this is not the case. Yep. So I honestly have no idea if this is a glitch or a feature, but it's an incredibly powerful mechanic. It allows us literally to drop down a power block onto global ground at one end of the level and then a shell changes the direction into which it travels on the other side of the level. I have no idea what to use this for, but I'm sure this will come in handy. Hooray! Alright, so finally let's talk about the craziest glitch discovered so far. So this glitch was found by S um um, by Sir Squirm. So check this out. Here Toad finds himself in the middle of a normal jungle level. There are a lot of mushroom platforms here and a couple of other things, but at least at first glance, nothing appears to be glitched here. Hmm, strange. I wonder what's going on. Well, let's send a walking mushroom through a door, shall we? And then let's go through this area again. Um, hmm, that's interesting. The first four mushroom platforms are suddenly entangled. Only the last one works as intended. That is, only until we ground pound on top of it, because if we ground pound it, it becomes entangled as well. Um, what is this? This donut platform is suddenly behaving a bit weird. Interesting. At least the mushroom platform to the right still works. That is, until the form drops down. Because then, this platform suddenly becomes entangled as well. The next two platforms only break once we ground pound them. But magically become platforms again as soon as we trigger the question blocks. If we ground pound this on off block, then the node block decides that it wants to be an empty block instead. That is, until we ground pound it again. Because then, the now empty block node block has a change of heart and decides to live from now on as a two-state block which is cool, but also breaks the two-state block we just ground pounded. If we now touch the node block, empty block, two-state block, then it realizes that changing its appearance doesn't change who it really is, and thus it shows us its true self again. What a touching story. So next there are a couple of other small things that we can do with this glitch. We can ground pound through two-state blocks, we can even use Bob arms to confuse the mushroom platforms. Needless to say, that stuff is pretty broken. So this leaves us with one. Final question. How does the setup for this amazing glitch work? Do we have to clone hundreds of forms to create a black hole for this to work? Do we have to overflow Mario Maker's entity limits in order to force platforms to behave in this weird way? Has it something to do with manipulating the undo button? Are we fake linking doors? What is the trick that breaks those poor mushroom platforms? Well, the answer to this question is actually surprisingly simple. All we have to do is to put down a mushroom platform and to put a vine containing question block on top of it. If Mario now goes through a door, then the platform breaks. I'm not kidding, that's the whole setup. So I actually have a small theory on why this glitch works. The thing is question block containing vines are the only kind of question block that respawns if Mario walks through a door. If we destroy a normal question block, then it never comes back. Question blocks that contain vines, however, always respawn. So that's a really neat small trick. What I believe happens here is that the game for some strange reason doesn't check whether the question block broke before and simply duplicates the question block as soon as Mario goes through a door, which is what causes this amazingly broken behavior. Though I'm just guessing here. So if we put a normal vine containing question block onto a platform, then the platform becomes entangled as soon as Mario ground pounds it, as soon as a thwomp lands on top of it or as soon as a bob omp goes boom. If you put an invisible question block on top of the mushroom platform, then it becomes entangled immediately. The whole glitch is unbelievably strange and a ton of fun to toy around with, so make sure to check it out 
before it gets patched, because I give this glitch about two weeks before it gets patched. Before we wrap this up, just a quick word of warning. Nintendo really doesn't like levels that use glitches, so I wouldn't recommend to upload a stage using one of those tricks, since there is sadly a high chance that Nintendo immediately deletes the level. Okay, so that was a quick overview of the biggest glitches found so far in the game. For anyone who wants to see more Mario Maker glitch action, I highly recommend a couple of things. So first, make sure to check out Isay's and Black60 Dragon's YouTube channels. Isay recently made a lot of really cool glitch compilations and Black60 Dragon has tons of very very interesting videos about glitches and weird Mario Maker tech on his channel. Second, for all you Discord users out there, make sure to check out Psychro's wonderful Mario Maker 2 Discord server. It's the place where I learned about most most of these glitches and there is a wonderful community there, working hard to break the game into pieces. Also, you might want to check out Psychro's YouTube channel to find out what he's up to because, um, it's interesting to say the least. All the links are in the description. Huge thanks to all the glitch hunters that found those amazing glitches. Seriously, thanks for making the real world a better place by destroying virtual ones. So with that being said, I hope that all of you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe feel especially like time is frozen today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!